Larry, we know the fourth quarter, December in particular, was really chaotic. But what are you seeing in January? Are retail investors coming back in? Is this a, a we, we know that the indexes have come, bounced back right. very sharply. Yeah. But what are you hearing from investors, too? We're seeing money being put to work. We have about $13 billion of inflows in, in our iShares platform month to date. Oh. Uh, we have seen um, pretty good flows. I don't want to annualize it, but we've had very good flows, pretty good flows in, in institutionally coming back into the market. Um, so we did see, um, we are seeing elevated uh, inflows from what we saw institutionally in the fourth quarter. Um, yeah, hopefully that carries on. Hopefully our iShares uh, flows carry on. So we're, we are seeing money being put to work. Um, and, and we'll see. But I, I would say more clients than ever before are asking questions. What should they be doing? Where should they be allocating the money? How should they be positioned? You know, we had a huge downdraft in emerging markets. And then the last few weeks, as the dollar started weakening, we started seeing no, uh, new inflows back in. And we're still seeing that now, too. So, you know, that's a carry on to Joe's question. Are we seeing more and more money being put to work? Do we believe now with the Federal Reserve slowing down their... Uh, they're tightening and maybe they're pausing for a long time. That would be an indication that the dollar is going to be on a path of weakening from its very large strengthening of last year. If that's the case, you are going to see elevated uh, flows into emerging markets. That fear in emerging markets is going to be reduced. And with all the uncertainty about Europe, you may see more flows back you know, in, in a more stable area like some of the emerging markets. But until we have better certainty on trade and on China, I think, you know, we're not going to see super elevated flows. But I do predict if there was a resolution between the U.S. and China related to trade, we would see a, a surge in, in investment sentiment. Does it have, to be, does it have to be a real resolution? Does it, can it be something that they just say, okay, we agree to call off the dogs and we're not going to actually think, resolve some think, of these issues? Or I, does think, it need I think if, they, if China reasserts its desire to purchase more U.S. products, and they set targets on what they're going to be purchasing, and they don't come to a resolution related to technology and intellectual capital, but they're working towards a resolution that will call off the dogs, and it just reduces the tension. We don't believe China is, uh, is going into a recession, but could we see a China be going from a mid-six growth rate to a low to five? Negative? Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, okay. Yes. Is that bad? Not really. It's just... As Joe was framing his question, the negativity in the fourth quarter was so severe, so many hedge funds, as we now are saying, are, were offside. Right. And I think the biggest issue we saw in the fourth quarter was huge deleveraging from the hedge funds. It was a mini 2008-9. We didn't see large institutional clients sell tons of assets at any one period of time. And so I do believe... That, le that deleveraging has occurred, so we have built a base, a foundation for probably better two-way flow. In such a fractured world, do you ever see a risk that sovereigns say, you know what, we actually don't want to use a BlackRock or we don't want to use an American uh, so-called company in this sort of grander uh, trade war? So I believe more and more companies are going to report consumer preference changes I mean, we saw that with Apple's announcement. I think you're going to see more companies suggest that may be a reason for it declines. Um, you said in the not, financial world? I've not seen that in the financial world. But, Andrew, as you know, in my last year's um, a CEO letter, I talk about having a purpose in every community. And I assert that you have to be, you know, Mexican right. in Mexico. You've got to be Japanese in Japan. I strongly believe, and I said this in my last year's letter, global, the, this anti-globalist views of the world now, this protectionism that we're seeing, is accelerating the need for every company to making sure where they operate, they prove their their reason of operating or they prove their purpose in, in the communities where they operate. I think that's going to be 
That, that is a real key element for the success of any company today. So obviously when I talk about, when I talked about purpose last year, I talked about having purpose to your clients, to your employees, right. to you other stakeholders, to but I said communities and countries. And I think what you're seeing now in 2000, what we saw in 2018 and 19, you need to show that you are doing a, you're helping the community you're operating, whether it's Italy or China or wherever you are, or America.